welcome everybody to the Hard Coherence Collaborative. Um, it's an absolute honor. We have our friend Kyle Cease here with us today. And Kyle's been probably one of our most like amazing guests who just always meets us right where we're at and just actually tries so hard to help us with our situations, offers incredible advice. And I've admired your ability to just show up as exactly who you are, where you're at in your life. And so I'm looking to do that more in my life. I'm excited for this conversation mm -hmm. today. We did reschedule a hundred times, but I'm so grateful to have you back. So thank you for being here with us. We re I really actually wonder how many reschedules we did. Like Mary could actually look, but I think that we really did probably reschedule like 10 to 15 times or something like that. Yeah, we broke the record. <laughs> yeah, but, but, you know, we still wanted this, you know, we both still wanted this. We just had different emergencies throughout the last couple months, but I'm in brother. And I'm, I'm so thankful to be in this work with you. And it's very clear to me how much you're looking to deepen yourself too. And, you know, it's really exciting when you, when you find people like that. Yeah. And thank you for that. We have a huge group of people for the next 30 days when this challenge starts that are going to be going into their hearts together, really trying to know themselves better and getting in touch with that healing power of the heart. I'd love to hear you offer just some you know, motivation as we set sail on this journey together? I think, well, one thing is deepening your understanding of what you are, I think is the greatest contrib contribution you can give to yourself and the world, right? And so there's a lot of people, for instance, that hit levels of desire to achieve a bunch, right? But it might be in the way of their desire to deepen their connection to themselves. Like if I sell this many books, then I'm something, or if I get this out, or it's all about how many views or how many sales I make or whatever. And you can actually stop your deepening with yourself for a while over this thing, because you're trying to live in the world that you were taught the highest thing is like in America, there's a lot of deep rooted teaching that the highest thing you can be is an achiever and get the house and, and, you know, have the security of a good relationship and then retire. But in the universal principle, it's not that the universe isn't going, you need to have enough money in the bank, you need to sell a bunch, and then you're worthy. The universe says, meet me. And we will go to a frequency that, believe it or not, will be more effortless, but will achieve much bigger than you've ever seen. But I want you to work on your connection to you. And, you know, this is kind of a cliche thing. And even if you don't know about this, it can be a great example. And I'll just explain it. But David Hawkins in his books has a scale, right, that you can go up. This is a person at 200, 300, and it talks about 540, I think, maybe 530, I can't remember, being unconditional love. And as you keep going up in your frequency, you can start to be worth more based on your vibration than if you were in a slightly lower vibration and doing a ton. In other words, a person that's just emitting 600 in the now is actually contributing more to the world than a person that's at 500 but sells 20 million books. Does this make sense? You could sell 200 million books, but they're at 500. A person at 600 who even isn't doing anything with books or getting anything out could be sitting in a cave, is actually emitting a frequency that is almost counterbalancing low frequencies and is normalizing uh, a world that matches your frequency. So a person that's working on the deepening of themselves and just going up in frequency, which by the way, doesn't only mean higher, 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 ignore the low. It means your full connection to yourself. Meaning like, are you okay with the darkness in your body and the unseenness? And is it seen? When it's finally seen, it, it alchemizes and leaves, right? So your connection to yourself, the deepening of the connection to yourself is a phenomenal number one priority, right? Bigger than how many things can I sell? Ironically, you're worth more. Ironically, you're rarer. And one of the things I said last night on a call that I thought was so big was realize there's only one of you and there's no other one of you. And instead of working on ignoring what the ultimate you is and getting as many sales as possible and being like what everyone else told you to be, find what the one thing that you are that no one else is, is because that's rare. 
meaning like the greatest artists in the world did a good job of finding the deepest level they could of what they are. Like Prince is an artist that brought a lot of him truly what he is to the world, right? And that happened to be worth a ton of money versus if Prince was like, just trying to sell as many, like launch his <laughs> whatever marketing thing or as, you know, and when you really go, I'm here to connect to the thing that nobody can replace, that no one else can do, all of a sudden you're the only one of you. And, you know, there's an infinite amount of money, there's an infinite amount of whatever, but there's only one you. So all of a sudden, your 24 hours a day suddenly becomes worth a lot because there's only one of you. And we've tricked ourselves into the idea there's a ton of us and there's only one thing of money, <laughs> right? That money is scarce or being seen is scarce. And that that I'm like everyone else, I'm just a forgettable thing. And this external thing is worth more, you know, someone else's approval or whatever. And just work on the deepening of you so you get to see what you truly were meant to be and watch what happens as a byproduct of that. Oh, I love that. Yeah, we had uh, had Paul Selig on and, you know, we had said, hey, our, our group's about to do this 30 day challenge where we're going to try to become the highest version of ourselves." And he said, I want you to shift your focus to exactly what you just said, 30 days of learning who you truly are and just loving who you truly are and really um, honoring that. And so when did this shift happen for you? Like, has it always been this way? When, when did, or do you, do you still struggle with an external focus? Because I feel like personally, there's times where I can be so centered and, you know, just loving myself. And then it's like one thing outside grabs my attention and, and sets me off and I can be gone from that focus for a week. So yeah. what do you do personally to kind of just stay in that amazing space that you're clearly in it, it radiates off you. And I really appreciate it. Oh, thank that. you, brother. Well, one thing, one thing I'll reflect real quick is if you want other people's approval, I'll just reflect this and I'll answer that question. If you want other people's approval without knowing it, that's a fix to something. Right. And it's a fix. Like, I don't feel like enough or I'm used to feeling connected to people who shame me or don't approve of me. Right. So those people are triggering something that I'm identifying with that I'm actually either attracted to or bringing into my life. Right. So then the egoic solution is find a bunch of people that do approve of you. Right. But then you're replacing the outside with another outside and that can be a great stepping stone to start to alchemize the shame that's inside. But the big challenge that we don't understand, this is a big revelation I had in the last week, is that shame exists in the body, but you don't have to personalize it as yours, right? There's darkness, there's unseenness, whatever. Like hold space for it and don't say it's mine. Don't say I feel when the shame's there right? So the fix, egoic fix to shame, which actually secretly keeps the shame in there, is to get a bunch of people's approval, right? But if you're just at a place where you're undone from everyone's point of view, and you're stuck looking at the shame, and you start to get that's not yours, you start to, you start to connect to the ultimate freedom that you are, and it purges the shame because it's no longer useful because you're not identified with it anymore. It leaves. It's no longer useful. So that's just a big thing to understand. I think that one of the biggest problems we have is a lack of awareness of what's really true. Believe it or not, right before this call, I worked with a client who was a woman who said, why can't I let go of this narcissistic ex-boyfriend I've had for a long time, but he feels like a rock, but he never does inner work. He shames the crap out of me all the time. And I said, your only problem is you're identified with the shame and the shame's attracted to a narcissist. Do you get what I'm saying? The shame's attracted to someone that would shame them because then they stay alive. Your problem is you think the shame is yours. If you understand it was put in you by your mom and it's not hers, it's like World War II's shame, right? You're, you're suddenly free of that and you're not attracted to the guy. The shame is that you think you are. So she started breaking off and crying out all of the stuff and realizing she's not attracted to a person that doesn't see her or shames her. She's only known her life as a as being shame. But as Bashar says, 
You know, an addiction is something you do because you don't know you're doing it. Once you understand you're doing it, it becomes a choice, right? So it's a choice if she now stays addicted to shame. And for everyone watching, it's a choice if you stay addicted to shame now that you've heard this point. For me, I've had many different chapters in my life of learning more and more of who I am. And it's been, it's happened through different phases, right? It's happened through starting out as a stand-up comic and then getting stage fright for the first time and then having Tony Robbins help and through his work and then meeting him and stuff that helped me transcend uh, an egoic construct that I was worried that I would lose my career and, and faint on stage. It was really weird, but I got this bizarre anxiety. I got worried I would faint on stage. And this fainting anxiety turned into a thing that was so big that at one point I couldn't walk anymore. And I started the process of learning how to change my thinking from I'm a victim to this to learning how to completely transcend that and change my thinking. And all of a sudden, I went from suicidal anxiety to number one Comedy Central special. So that slowly helped me get slightly closer to who I am, right? Then there were other phases that are always gradually happening of just like having to release control. Like at one point I became this positive force in the comedy scene and a bunch of comics attacked me that didn't know what I was doing and thought I just became some Scientologist cult leader that wants, you know, co wants comics money to learn and I wasn't even making money. But this caused the next stage for me overall of having to release control, right, of what people think. Because I was attacked by a blog one time in 2010, and then a bunch of comics reposted it. And I was suddenly in a place where I had to face and release control of what tons of people thought of me. And it was a lot of people with big opinions that released them angrily and comedically, which makes it even harder and more realistic, and um, had to transcend that. And throughout that, the last few years going through major dark nights of the soul and being present for energies in my body that really felt unseen and felt, you know, um, unloved and un misunderstood and going from a place of um, going, it's fine. And then, and, and just thinking, okay, stuff people are thinking is gone to me just releasing out loud in a video what really happened and releasing completely the idea that um, instead of me trying to bury what people think, like just bringing it out, you can all know everything that's going on in my life. And that took me to a frequency of holding on to trying to look good, to being being fine with just being a mess and noticing that the energy I was holding on to, I don't hold on anymore. And it has been the most freeing thing. And what that did was took me to a frequency where I spent maybe a month after that frying out all kinds of patterns of judgment and shame, and then finding this deep-rooted calling of, of what being a man is that I've never known. I've been very good at being a man in certain ways and running my business. I'm, I'm incredible at it. I'm very calculated in certain things. I know how to do certain things. And then if I think about myself in the last 13 years, I've been incredible at helping primarily females feel their feelings. So I've had this man that I am there, but slightly buried behind a kind of false feminine, which was me basically in my mind for the 13 years, becoming the mom that I felt that I never had. And right now I'm in the process of becoming the dad I felt that I never had. And that's changing in so many ways. Like I find that I, I ate vegan in the last 13 years and now I can't. And I'm finding myself going through my own issues of like kind of wanting to be almost carnivore or keto and finding this power in building muscle versus just trying to build muscle, eating lettuce and hummus. It's, it's hard to do. 
and really transcending my belief that my world of veganism is the only way and finding this me that's masculine. I'm also doing a ton of jujitsu right now and finding more of a masculine core. I'm literally doing sometimes two to three private one-on-ones a day of jujitsu or, or classes. And, um, I'm finding a me that I didn't know could physically kick someone's ass. And that might sound not very spiritual. In fact, I had a person not too long ago, no, we don't need to beat up anyone. This is love. And I'm like, I know, but love was burying my my power and my boundaries and my get the hell away and my strength, right? And so I, up until maybe a couple months ago, lived in a given that if some guy burst into a restaurant with a gun, that I, my only thing would be, I'd be good at hearing why he wants to rob the place and talking him out of it. I'd be really good at getting people I love out of the restaurant. But now I literally know how to put him in a chokehold or arm bar him instantly. And I don't care if he's really strong, if he like... In what I know, I know exactly how to maneuver certain things, and I'm going to just get better and better at that. And that's bringing a strength that has boundaries. That's bringing a strength that says, you know, I've had a false peace that I thought was peace in order to avoid conflict. And I have kept peace with people, even if I felt they were crappy to me. I've and and didn't get out what I felt. Like they might, they might hold the space that they can forgive me, but they won't own their part. And I've had this I gotta stop conflict thing where peace was number one, but it it was actually fear called peace. And for true peace, my connection to myself is okay with saying that's not okay. My connection to myself calls something out. My connection to myself protects my daughter, you know, and and my connection to myself protects my inner child now too. And the amount of times I've used spirituality to bury my inner child, I realize that's not spirituality. And so unconditional love actually sometimes says no. Unconditional love says get the hell away. Unconditional love will stop something. And that's bringing up the masculine side. Literally, I switch from a Tesla to a pickup truck. I am rescuing, I'm helping to bring money to an organization that rescues children from child trafficking. And we've made over $600,000 for Operation Underground Railroad, and it has saved a many, many children from a life of being trafficked and horrible things. And this new me is so exciting. This me that is interested in me as a man, in my power. And it's not a negation of the amazing abilities I have to hear women's feelings. But one thing I'll tell you that's so weird is if you went to me almost ever 10 years before what I became, I usually become the thing that I used to make fun of, right? So in my early 20s, if you told me that eventually... Like if you told that guy that was a stand-up comic who was very successful, if you said, you want to know where you'll be in 10 years, he's going to picture the stadium. And it's like, nope, you're going to be sitting at Rhythmia helping women through their feelings. He'd he'd go, what? Like, that's what I end up doing? Like, I thought I'd be a stadium comedian. And it's like, nope, you're going to help women through their feelings. And then if you told me a year ago, guess what you're going to be doing in a year? <clears throat> you're going to be tapping into the masculine side that you used to think of as toxic and bad and all the shit that you used to shame. Like you're going to tap into your strength and you're going to want a pickup truck more than a Tesla. You're going to want meat more than veggies. You're going to want to rescue children that are in cages. You're going to want to, right? Like, so it's me working on different stages of meeting my true self And a lot of the things that I'm doing, um, I would always think aren't relevant to what my ego's goals were. Like if the ego says, how do we make this company bigger? You wouldn't think the answer would be jujitsu, right? But the jujitsu is causing me to have more no bullshit in my content. It's causing me to have more strength. It's causing me to cut my time quicker. Like in other words, have a boundary in those things and it's it's helping me to not waste time with things that would usually waste my time so like it's bizarre because sometimes life gives you an answer that's not related you think to what you're looking for 
yet it's the exact thing that fills every other space up. Does that make sense? It actually makes so much sense. And it's kind of bizarre because I'm literally on the exact opposite uh, side of this. I'm going through the same thing right now uh, where I had this spiritual awakening a couple of weeks ago. I was in this meditative state and this angel came overhead. And then these little mini angels started swan diving into my body. My whole body started cracking. And the message I got was be more feminine. And literally, wow. literally, I started eating granola the next day. You know? <laughs> awesome. And, and like what you said about your mom, for me, it's my dad. And so right. I'm now trying to fulfill that. And that's where I'm at in my journey. And um, I think it'd be cool just to talk real quick about what actually does it mean to be masculine and what does it mean to be feminine? Um, I think there's mm. misconceptions out there today. And what is a healthy balance? Well, you know, it is weird because that that it, a lot of times we do work on, I got to be more masculine or more feminine. And it's funny because if you just get to the core of what you are, whatever the essence is in your body will take over. So it's funny to compartmentalize. It's like now for more masculine, but yeah. like weirdly I'm compartmentalizing and running it. But obviously if I'm connected to the true essence of myself, whatever my deepest core is, will start to just rearrange itself on its own. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't say I need to have more of this private part and less of this one, you know, or I don't need to have, right? So as you as you move into your core, it happens that it's there. But what mine my way was, was I, I don't know what is what of masculine and feminine, but I will say this. My dad was an incredible entrepreneur and I learned how to build a lot of businesses from him. He also very often was in his head. Most of the time he was in his head. He was not present. And I felt closer to my mom. My dad was gone more. I bonded with my mom more. My mom was not a typical feminine energy. She kind of, she was, you know, wasn't into like, you know, let's go shopping or let's get our nails done or anything like that. She kind of, she kind of had this energy. I remember her just kind of, we were watching the news and they were like coming up and it showed a bunch of baseball players fighting. And my mom goes, men are so dumb. <laughs> I remember being like, they totally are. And then not remembering I am one and forget. And I'm bonded with her on how dumb men are yeah. and forgot that I am one. So like, to me, my essence for a long time was kind of this, what feels connected to my mom thing. And one thing my mom often brought to me everything my mom said was the gospel to me too. Like it was true. It wasn't a thing where I like looked through it and go, is that true? And one thing my mom often brought to the table was how I could get hurt, like protection from me getting hurt. Like if I wanted to play football, I can't because she saw a story of a football player that got paralyzed. If I want to ride a motorcycle, it's very dangerous. Right. And there was, I remember in eighth grade, like the school was going to go to Washington, D.C., and she was worried there'd be a terrorist attack. So I was the one kid in my class that couldn't go to Washington, D.C. You know, when I did a gig in Hawaii, she was worried a tsunami would get me. When I when I got a convertible, she said, while I bought it, I'll probably be decapitated, right? And I just was living with, it's true that I'll get hurt in every direction, and when I went into my first jujitsu class, like my body was carrying all of those fears. And it just thought like, I'll get choked out and be paralyzed in the first hour. And I believed that, but I had a higher me show up and go, what if, what if I don't get that? And what if I just do it and see, and it, in doing a jujitsu class, it was like the start of my mom's fear leaving because I'm now moving based on a higher thing that says, Maybe also you'll get strong. Maybe also you'll become powerful. And it didn't only look at how I could get hurt as an endpoint. And I felt for me to step into kind of that risk, but then override her fear and actually evolve past what her fear was, um, was unbelievably powerful for me. And it felt like all I know is this can be, of course, feminine too, but the masculine me has a bigger desire to protect or face something or has has a part of me that knows now, I mean, the way it's going, like, I'm just like, the average person is screwed if he starts something, right? Like, and, and I, feel it too. I can feel it in you. 
Uh, you you feel like you I feel the masculinity compared to last time and I'm not right. saying I feel it yeah. yeah there's some kind of like there's some kind of me that I am that would have been intimidating to me five years ago yeah. right and it's very loving still it's just more grounded and not as much of a people pleasing energy it's more protective you know and more powerful it's almost like it has the difference between you know, there's a great thing I saw once, the difference between LA and New York. Yeah. And it showed a postcard and both, there were two pictures and both were a guy walking by another guy. LA, it said, have a nice day. And it's thinking drop dead. In New York, it's saying drop dead. And it's thinking, have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> so in this essence, there's more of a power that I have with myself. So I feel more love for myself. And I feel more here for the world. But I also probably sound slightly more no bullshit. I probably sound slightly more, you know, in a new, someone once did a video where they said in New York, like they'll swear at you and, and laugh at you, but they'll also change your tire if you're broke down. If you're in LA and you, and you get a tire, no one will help you, but they'll send love and light. You know what I mean? Or they'll, Right. And and so the difference between who's actually efficient. And I think as I'm finding my strength, I love myself more, feel more love for other people, but less need to sell them on it. Less need to. Does that make sense? Like for sure. And I, I would love it uh, if you could potentially help work me through a couple of things, because you have sure. the balance and you uh, talked a, a little bit at the beginning about just not being your shame. It's not yours. And so I still actually, I'm just going to be completely honest, I still am attached to a lot of my shame. Um, and there's situations that come up for me where it's like, if I'm loving towards somebody, and then I feel like they're not nice to me, I literally then from that point forward, perceive them as a threat and mm -hmm. try to control them. And I struggle with that. And then I'll do things as a result of that fear where I try to control people. And, um, and then I feel the shame. Mm. Well, first of all, one thing I'll reflect to you is the fact that you see it one and the fact you're asking about it too. And the fact you're asking about it in front of people on your podcast is huge. In other words, if you notice there is some glimpse from some higher frequency than the pattern that's willing to do the work, right? So there's a you that reached out past the mud. So there's, there's an, an essence of you that's out of this pattern. Do you understand that? Like, like you already see through it. And the way patterns work is once they're seen, they actually get louder while they're breaking off. So loud. <laughs> so loud. Yeah. It's yeah. so loud because it's dying. Like the bad guy in every movie, right? In the beginning, when no one knows where they are or who they are, they're happy and secret and quiet. But then when you catch them and they, you know, take the mask off or whatever, the person's screaming, but they're caught, right? So they're like yelling at their assistant, seize him, and no one is. And they're just like trying, but they're louder. I want you to know that pattern that you feel is loud because it's dying, right? So the first thing I would say is bring compassion to it. Just I mean, can I be even more specific and just use an exact example? Sure. So it's like, sure. you know, Leah is a woman. Most of the time she's very happy and enjoyable. She'll have like a frustrating day, right? And yeah. maybe, maybe she like looks at me a certain way. Literally something that's not personal to me. But like if I'm being nice to her and then she'll be like, you know, maybe she's just not feeling that way and she gives me an attitude or something. I take it so personal. And then mm -hmm. I, I like, well, you know, for the rest of the day, be trying to like control the situation. And then maybe I get upset and then, and then the next day, then she's even more upset. And then I have so much shame. I literally feel like awful. Yes. Uh, and then it just perpetuates itself because then I'm not being a loving partner. I'm not showing up in the ways that I should. And because I'm feeling so shameful, which then causes me to want to control things even more. And then that's causing her to get even more mad. So then we like finally just sometimes we'll be like, we need just a couple of days to just relax and let this settle because it's so strong. Yeah. But I really appreciate you saying that it means that it's moving out. Um, yeah. Well, and here's, here's one thing that will help when you feel so shameful, I want you to, I want to offer you to not do anything, yeah. right? Like in other words, 
the shame has power at the level of your response to it. So if the shame kicks in and says that was bad, you need to control everything. That's one thing. But if you start controlling everything, then you're saying the shame runs me. But your growth would be to feel shame and just feel shame. And even if it says go control the situation, you hear that and honor that it wants to, but you don't. Then who is in charge? The one that is be feeling the shame, right? So the first thing is, it sounds like there's a, a feeling of shame that can be triggered from the way that Leah looks at you, right? Or a feeling of... Yeah, and it starts off subtle, and then all of a sudden, it's like this huge energy that feels so hard. And I, I appreciate what you said. You're saying just sit in it. It, right yeah. now, it feels so heavy. And and this will also help too. You said Leah comes home from work and I'll look at you that way. Did you say? Well, it just can be random, you know, but it, it's never actually personal to me. It's my own stuff. Right. So imagine that she has a feeling that she's going through yeah. and she's hurting. Yeah. And you took it that this isn't don't shame yourself for this. OK, but hear it as an exciting breakthrough. She has a way she's feeling yeah. and you took it as you. So now she can't feel what she feels yeah. because you're going, this is mine. This is because of me, right? And if, if she looks at you, even if she's furious, right? Even if it was something you did, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which by the way, is a thing you will reflect on on your own, yeah. right? Or hear from her that that actually triggered her. And then you can decide if it's also true for you that that doesn't work. But imagine if when she looks at you, you understand she's in her own trigger and her own pain. And I'm not going to take that from her. I'm going to bring compassion to her. And imagine that you're losing kind of a codependency pattern that I've had my whole life too, that I'm losing too, that, that takes that goes... I'm scared that they could abandon me. I'm scared that they might leave me. I'm scared that they might make it my fault. I'm scared that they'll like, let me ask you this. If she looks at you in a certain way, if you're really honest, is there a fear she'll leave you or she'll talk crap about you or you'll be misunderstood or you'll be shamed? Like what's the, what's the personalization? She looks at you and she gives you a bad look and you now see that as what could happen to you. Yeah, it's, it's from my childhood where, you know, my, my dad did the best he could, but he was adopted and he had a really rough upbringing. And, and uh, I would always try to be loving to him, but he just wasn't happy towards me, I think. And so it, it, it just reflects that, like, I'm not safe in my own home. It's like, and, and obviously I'm not giving all the details of everything, but it, it, it feels heavy to me, but I know it's not Leah's, you know, yes. I mean? it's like, I'm feeling the heaviness of my childhood. Yes. But it's not hers, you know? Take a deep breath in. I have something for you. Take a deep breath in and say this. I can't control dad. I can't control dad. I no longer control dad. I no longer control dad. And check this out too. My fake happiness will not control my dad. My fake happiness will not control my dad. Right? Because your happiness wasn't out of true happiness. Your happiness was out of protection right you were trying to diffuse someone that wasn't physically safe it's actually i see the direct correlation how i tried my whole life as a child and i've never thought about this till now so i really appreciate this Huge yeah of thing. course i tried my whole childhood to just make my dad happy and now right. um, i do that instead of, like instead of circling back to the beginning instead of trying to make leah happy it's like you said this is 30 days of giving yourself what you really need. Well, and I don't know that you'll want to fill in this blank, but you can personally or you can whatever out loud if it calls to you and feel free to deny this or not answer it. But if dad, if I don't make dad happy, what happens to me? Yeah, maybe yelled at or... Um, Hit? Yeah, not like aggression probably... Um, and he's not this way anymore, but back, you know, aggression, um, threatened, you know, it's like, it's not physical violence, but almost the threat of it. Well, how old, to, what was the youngest you were during that process? The youngest, I mean, probably like mm -hmm. 
Five. <laughs> five? Okay. So five is when you're being hypnotized of how the world works, right? So, and also five is a very little body in a new world trying really hard to make a person way bigger than you that could really destroy you happy. And because he actually threatens you. Now you're a grown up. So if someone threatened us now, we can do something about it. But as a five year old, this is the person you have to live with, right? So if we bring compassion to this five year old and have a dad that's threatening you, and I, and by the way, I want you to know I understand he doesn't do that now, and we're grateful that he changed. But don't use that knowing to deny what the pattern, which is timeless, feels. Like in other words, the pattern in the body still goes. I created a protection mechanism at a time that it was necessary because I actually didn't know if I would survive because I had to live with a person that literally threatened me. Yeah. Right. So the body goes, I'm hearing that I will be whatever hit or dead or whatever it said. And like, it's going, well, I got to take that seriously. I don't get bluffing. I don't get sarcasm. I don't get anything. Yeah. And so this little boy goes, do what you can to not get, what he threatens you with, right? And so the little boy goes, my job is to make people happy, but you're making people happy to diffuse violent energy, not because you're fully happy, right? So to you, to the pattern, it actually goes, I have no job if people don't have violent energy. So it might bring some people, I, I doubt Leah, but it might bring some people into your life that that it's attracted to. I, I'm here to diffuse their energy. So I'm going to be over the line nice to them, right? And then, and then also maybe there's people with totally innocent things that it just feels similar. Like maybe Leah is just having a bad day and gives you a look and it reminds you energetically of the, it hits the the child that feels... I could be threatened or I could be left or abandoned or whatever else. And even though Leah isn't doing that, it just has the same tone. And that's what needs to be seen. This pattern that says, you know, I'm scared that the five-year-old me, which you're not anymore, but still exists in the chest, right? Will be abandoned. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that feels so good. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for people like you who have kind of showed me that it's okay to talk about things like this because I now, I feel like I actually just have got something that allows me to understand um, this more. And it's like through that understanding that this transcends, you know? And so- imagine, imagine an old you that created an identity to bring happiness to stop people from threatening you or hurting you and imagine a new you that frees yourself from anyone who has violent energy yeah. it's not yours it's theirs yeah and i get that love from myself now yes and then your happiness is actually legit it's your sincere fulfillment yeah and yeah, like, like yeah, yeah like a recogn uh, recognition that if i'm seeking to make other people happy is my primary focal point. It's probably that childhood self. Correct. Especially if there's a fear under it. Like if I don't make them happy, they could abandon me. If I don't stay connected to the wrong people, when they dislodge, they will hurt me. Whatever gossip about me, hit me, whatever else, right? I've had that too, where I'm sitting there with people that don't feel safe. So I'm sitting there trying to land the plane with them. So we have this fake peace and they won't do that shit. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. now I can protect myself, so I don't care. But like, yeah, no, I appreciate that so much. That was profound. And I'm going to sit with that for a while and really try to bring that into my consciousness as what's actually happening. And I think I'll have the ability to see things differently now. I've never heard that. So, and And also, I don't know what's the chicken or the egg in this, but believe it or not, unconsciously, your fear of that could actually encourage Leah's look. Yeah, I, I actually <laughs> also recognize that it's true. <laughs> you know? right like it's like so the pattern goes i don't want her to look this way or i don't want to to feel this way but also unconsciously you know without her even meaning to it could just be like she feels unsafe in that she has so much power over you in that you're so scared of 
a look or something like that. You know what I mean? And she's she's creating space beautifully for you to turn into your connected, even if she gives you the worst look and you're present. Yeah. She's you creating know. the best space for me to transcend through these things. So yeah. I'm so grateful. And I think what I want people to take away from this is, you know, the ability to transcend any of these patterns, whatever they are. And so for me, I'm going to take this now and I'm going to spend, as we start this challenge, these 30 days, just really focusing on, on loving myself. Um, what else do you do to, to anchor in this new way of life? One huge thing is meditating a lot. Like yeah. I do, I do an hour to two hours, usually an hour and a half a day of meditation. Like literally this morning, I did a big long one. You just sit and you listen and you, it's funny because when you actually realize there's only the now and in the now you have all these opportunities to escape shame. But if you sit in the now long enough, it makes it come up. It makes it like literally dissolve. Right? So Sometimes the now can be not experienced by you creating an achiever in order to not feel shame. Like if I just achieve all this, then so, but if you're actually listening from the now, it goes, this lump here is not real. This was a trauma that I needed to have when I was a kid to protect myself from living with, you know, it's so weird because as grownups, if we lived as grownups with who our parents were in most cases, we would have had the choice and done moving out. But as kids, even if your dad hits you or threatens you or whatever else, yeah. you still got to go to bed every night next to that in the room next to that guy or your, or your mom. And you keep having no choice but to choose that house and those siblings and those people. But as a grown up, you could be like one threat and I'm out. I, I'm literally recognizing so many patterns now just from this conversation it's like the next thing i do as a result of this it's what you said is i i wake up every day and i run to go achieve you know yeah. I, I sell solar for a living and it's like now if i make the money and i do this i'm gonna you know but i'm running on that hamster wheel really fast yeah it's it's, it's to fulfill what you're talking about well what's crazy is if you really start connecting more to the now you might lose the I have to achieve energy that does it out of fear, but you'll probably sell 10 times the solar in your presence, in your, in your, it's fine if you don't get it, in your, you know, knowing that, you know, like really knowing the balls in your court, what you have actually saves them money, what you have actually is really helpful, what you have is more natural, what you have, whatever, and you hold a presence for that, that's real, you will find there's less effort like, I mean, I literally do a talk every Sunday, every Wednesday, and most Fridays, and nothing's planned, right? I do six-day events and nothing's planned. And all this greatness comes through because I'm not like, I got to sell this. I got to get them to like this. It's just the knowing, right? And that's available for you. And this is why knowing who you are is so much bigger than forcibly achieving as a denial of who you are. Yeah, this has been so helpful. Uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you about, something that came up recently, uh, is how do you deal with, you, you have a big following, how do you deal with the critics? Because, you know, this whole thing of interviewing people really came organically and never really had too much, um, like, harsh things that people said. But Leah and I were recently on a podcast, and um, people started saying they thought we were AI, and, like, literally, like, were the most you know fake people and then a hundred people just started like going all in about it and it like it hurt I was I took it personal I I for a minute like was like why am I even doing this you know mm -hmm. yeah and then I circled back to like you know there's it, it probably doesn't have anything to do with me but it felt like hatred directed at me and I know you've experienced this before oh so, yeah. yeah I'm just curious how do you how do you handle it well, one question I want to just show you if we break it down is when that happened, you said, why do I even do this? Yeah. Which gave me a given that you're doing it for them, yeah. not you, right? Yeah. You hear that? Like, why am I even, I'm doing this for you. You're not just only liking it. Like, <laughs> I, I'm doing this for you and not for me, yeah. right? Mm. 
And, and so one of the things I said on a call last night is ask yourself this, and it might take you in a whole new direction, or it might change how you do this. What do I want to experience? Do you hear how this question, what do I want to experience, doesn't bring in what should I do? A lot of people have an energy of what should I do? And then they're just kind of an amalgam of their parents' biggest rules or what their best friends would tell them they should do. And they have this God that moves from a should. But if I say, what do I want to experience? Okay, I'm not taking jujitsu so that people like me. I'm taking jujitsu because I want to experience what the hell I am more. Right. I want to experience powers that I didn't know exist no exist. And if I lost a fight and was like, why am I even doing this? Then I was just taking it so that I could win that one fight versus the expansion and the development of what I truly am. And if you go, if you ask yourself why you're doing this, maybe you'll realize part of why you were doing this was to get admiration or love and attention from the external. Yeah. And if you look at why do I do this and actually answer it now, like from a new place, why am I doing this? Because I want to learn from the other speakers, because I want to offer and hear and learn stuff for myself, and then also share what I learn. If Is it, is it because I want to get a giant following? That old paradigm of I want to get is dying for us, right? I'm doing this so I can just see the money I get. Weirdly, if I just work on me, money shows up. And, and approval shows up. But you, everyone that's done anything great was violently hated by half the planet, right? Martin Luther King or Lincoln or whatever, you know, they're, they, you just are used to tons of people, like for them, one of them dead, you know? And, you know, if you, if someone says, <laughs> If someone says you guys are AI, I laugh because we go through this all the time too. Someone thinks that I'm like, someone wrote that too long ago. Apparently I was just doing this and someone said that's a Freemason Illuminati hand sign or something that I'm like secret, you know, or I don't remember someone like people come up with theories all the time and I'll get comments like you can tell that because I'm talking about living in the moment, think that people think I'm controlled opposition that's trying to get people to relinquish their ownership of things so that it goes in alignment with the new world order or whatever. And I'm like, no, you can still have stuff. You just lose your attachment to it because you'll find that you're God, which would completely eliminate the new world order. Like, you know, and I just am used to people thinking the most funny things about me. And if I know that's not true, then it doesn't hit me. If you hear that and are hurt that people said you're AI, then believe it or not, you're still kind of a combination of what you know to be true. I'll let you know. I know that you're not AI. I believe it with all my heart. Sometimes I believe some people, people are overlooking, can't, could be AI. Like, like, I'm like, I know people who feel like they're AI to me, but I also... I think it's that same thing too, where like really just thinking about how I've been chasing to to create, you know, someone else's happiness, like from childhood, it's like, am I actually even attracting these things at times, you know? Say that, say that once more so I can really break that down with you. Say that again. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you know, it's like my own desire to make people happy. Like, like, you know how you were saying that uh, I might actually be attracting the look from Leah so that I can feel the certain way. It's like, oh, maybe, yes, yes. It's like maybe I'm just attracting that too. Just because. That's exactly, that's, those comments are absolutely needed for your growth. Yeah. Now you can use those comments to recoil and go into a backwards thing where you run from it or you believe that's true or whatever, or you can use it to ascend. And imagine life is trying to ask you this Michael Beckwith question, what's trying to birth? What's trying to emerge here? Like, in other words, something that you actually are, but haven't accessed yet is trying to emerge. Maybe it's a full knowing of what you are. I mean, I know stories of people going up to Eckhart Tolle and telling him he's the Antichrist and him just standing there and hugging them. <laughs> and and I'll tell you, anyone that's willing to interview me, Teal Swan or Paul Selig is not AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. I think what's really coming through, and I appreciate this, it's connection and presence and and you know just slowing down and i think it's, it's it's naturally hard for me because 
I've always been chasing that, um, you know, desire to make somebody else happy. And so I, I think I'm going to actually take, I am going to take your recommendation for meditation and just sit and allow it to come up. Yeah. Oh my God. If you give yourself, I'll tell you right now, your whole life will change. If you give yourself a minimum of an hour of meditation a day for a hundred days, don't break it. Yeah. Like if you really go, no matter what, at this time, whatever, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., nothing can get in the way. Nothing can get on the schedule. Like, Leah, I need that space or you do it with me, but we're meditating for an hour a day. I think you'll be shocked at how different your life is by about day 70. And if you keep it going and string it and get to 100, it'll probably be a deep-rooted habit that you'll have for a long time. But the amount of issues, one, that don't show up because you train... Imagine all the issues in your body. Life is here to get them out of your body. So it can do it by you seeing it and transcending it internally, or it can pull it out of you by making the external thing you're worried about actually happen so that you have to look within, right? So we'd prefer to not have it try to ruin your life and then fix it. Which it's definitely happened for me before and worked and eventually I'm free, but it was a lot of suffering and close to suicidal feelings and yeah. right. But you could also listen an hour a day and quite a bit of those things will dissolve and you'll be moved towards what expands you and you'll start to get, yeah, there's people that, and by the way, I will also say this. You're also putting yourself in a position because you interview so many different people with different views yeah. that you're going to have their haters, <laughs> right? Oh, you know, and so if you're only, if, if not your only, but if your prime voice is these other people, right, you'll just have, you know, their, their critics or people that are anti them too, or whatever. But if you can just be okay with that, like I'm sometimes fine with that. Yeah. You know, I'm like, yeah, you'll, I know some people won't like that. I'm choosing to bring this person on, but I'm doing it for me. You know, sometimes they don't like, I've had people hate me because I'm friends with JP Sears, you know, because of his political stance. And I'm like, yeah. I will, then you can go, yeah. you can go, not, I'm going to let go of JP in order to keep some fan happy. I'm going to live my life, yeah. you know, this has been so amazing. Um, yeah, I, I have, I, I like, I feel like I need to have an integration from this interview. So this has been uh, really amazing, man. And I would love to just know how we can support you, how our community can support you. I'm sure there's so many people listening that were like, holy crap, that was just so powerful. So how can people get more of this from you? I'm, I'm honored, brother. Well, our big thing that we've worked on for five years and made amazing is our membership site. It's called the Absolutely Everything Pass. I literally do a live call on Sunday, one on Wednesday. We have teammates doing other things Tuesday and Thursday. And then I usually do a hot seat on Friday. And our and a hot seat's where I bring someone on and shift them, kind of a little bit like I did you, but I do it, I take them all the way for an hour, wow. you know, break down everything. And we have about a thousand hours of content on it. Mm -hmm. And um, all of my past live events, these used to be thousand dollar events. They're all there now. And we just have a membership site and it's 79 a month, or you can right now get a year for two ninety nine. And I promise you, it will pay for itself over and over and over again, because you'll spend a year doing this inner work with me and teammates and guests that I have on and different things. And you will shift, you know, your addictive patterns, you'll stop buying stuff like alcohol and things that don't align or overeating and just find in the first month, you just saved so much on that and move to a frequency that is more valuable, you know, makes more and goes to a higher level of health. So you start saving money on hospital visits and all kinds of other stuff and blood pressure medication and therapists, and you start connecting to your true self. And it's amazing. It's it's really powerful. And right now we have thousands of people on and people that have been on for years and years and years and say they've saved so much money by being on it. Like it's so expensive to not be on it. So if you join us, it's the Absolutely Everything Pass. They can go to it at absolutelyeverything.tv um, or kylecease.com will take you to it. And yeah. Yeah, I'm a member and I'm going to start being more active because I really am grateful for this. And one thing I just want to say before we end is I, I find it so fascinating. Pe people tell me that like I, I am a member of AA 
And every year I go back to celebrate my year anniversary. And they always say, like, there's probably five or 10 people that come up to me and say, you are a completely different person than you were last year. And it's this openness and willingness to just let it strip away. And I've, I've admired people like you, where I truly feel like you are a different person from the last time I saw you. And, and so I appreciate you and your continued willingness to just let it all go and just become whatever is calling you to become. <laughs> I appreciate it. And it takes one to know one, brother. I can feel that in you too. I feel more of a groundedness and, you know, you were wonderful before, but I just feel so much power in you right now. And this is what's needed for us to change the world, man, us into our real strength and our real power and our, and our real selves. And know that we're we're all in process and even though i've transcended so many things which actually didn't come from achieving but much more letting go it's it's a lot of deaths egoic deaths that cause what's on the other side because every egoic death gets replaced by more god more universe right um but yeah man we are in the work and there's always more and i say that because i know a lot of people that go when is this finally done like when am i there and it's like you're on the planet for a reason like you don't get there and then just be like well now the rest of the planet is no more inner work like i'm i'm understanding and accept that it there's a lot more in here and I'm making peace with it and I'm harmonizing with it. And life becomes this gradual release every other day. And, and it's replaced by more strength and more power and more knowing who we are and more love and less control and less manipulation and less fear. And yeah, man, you're a good guy. And I'm, I'm honored to be in this work with you. And I appreciate your love and support. And you're, you're right on track. Thank you. Uh, could you just provide our group with one final message before they start this 30 day challenge? Yeah. One thing that came up this morning that I loved was to, with a, with a client was know something that's very hard for people to understand. You are completely right now living a life worth living. In other words, it's a life well lived right now. Ego has caused us to believe life is only well lived if I get this many books sold or if I get this workout or if I impact people in this egoic measurable way. But some of us also have parts of our life that's here to learn how to fall apart, that's here how to learn to just not know for a while, that it that it's valid also to relax, that it's valid also to just, just even getting out of a bad relationship, maybe as undoing lifetimes of karmactic energy that would have kept that relationship. And you just broke it off. And even though you feel totally worthless or whatever, you're right on schedule for the ascension of our planet. And that that it's not only that you can measure that you got a New York Times bestseller or that you achieved some egoic way, right? Know that your life right now is fully well-lived. And even if you've had a bad past or you're used to feeling a ton of guilt, start with the full accepting that this is it and you will move from a much higher place of love versus being under the false belief that it's only well-lived if you do whatever you are egoically taught a life worth living is. So you can't have a wasted life, even if you've done nothing, you've done everything. So take in the idea that you're right on schedule, you're contributing to the ascension of our planet, whether it's through contrast and egoic addictions, or whether it's through the revelation of that and the transcending of it. Obviously, the more you love yourself, the more you won't choose those addictive patterns and will move to a higher self. But you from a place of love will choose higher versus trying to get out of a shame pattern to get to higher. You know, understand you don't have an addiction, your shame does. And undo yourself from the shame by understanding it's there, but it's not mine. And you start to get present and love it and release it. And you birth a new world through you. Thank you so much, man. I love you, brother. I love you too, man. This was uh, amazing. You so, too, brother. I look Until forward to seeing everyone uh, in, in your community. So if you're listening to this, definitely join Kyle's community. Uh, Leah's been a member for a long time. It's really helped her. And we look forward to continuing to support you. So whatever you need ever, just let us know. Our community loves you. So thank you, Kyle. Thank you, brother. And and love to Leah. I heard she wasn't feeling good. That's Yeah, yeah she's resting up right now. She, she is listening. So she, Oh, awesome. Well, well, send her my love and, and uh, healing magic or whatever sentence. Awesome. That
hits the best. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you, Mary, too. Mary always does an amazing job setting these things up. So, Yeah, so much love to Mary. Mary's my teammate who is so grounded and powerful and doing the same work and just is magic. So yeah, everyone meet Mary when you go on the Absolutely Everything Pass because she'll change your life. Well, bye, everybody. We love you all. <laughs>